Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Minister Robert Tubb Lumford from Faith Christian Center Church. Our pastor is Pastor Carlton Sharp. I would say under the direction of Lady Gwen Sharp, but he is the pastor of this church. <laughs> Amen. Look, I have the awesome t uh, privilege right now to speak with a bunch of youth pastors. It's never a calm or dull moment with a bunch of youth pastors. So therefore, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to uh, introduce ourselves, if I can. I'm going to start from the front row right here. All right, my name is Pastor Chris Williams, Paradise Baptist Church. All right, all right, all right. I'm Todd Pounds. I'm a youth pastor at First Baptist Church Woodville. I'm Jeremy Williams. I'm the youth pastor at Paradise Baptist Church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm Jason Norm. I'm the youth pastor at Cathedral of the Pines. Awesome, awesome. And I'm Jerry Keyes, youth pastor at Cathedral Faith Baptist Church. Awesome, awesome. Look, we are about to have a good time. We have uh, come together just to... Uh, just to talk, just to chop it up a little bit. I have a few questions. Go ahead on and jump in when you can, or I may just call one of you guys. That'll work? That'll work. All right, here we go. Uh, ask that. Here's my question. When you were called, or you knew you were supposed to be a youth pastor, how did that come about? <laughs> I'm going to start. Tell you mind if I start with you, brother? I don't mind at all. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I was saved at 29, okay. and uh, I was a preacher's kid, raised in the church, all of that, and then uh, went and did my thing for a while. Mm -hmm. and then at 29, the Lord saved me. 32, called me to ministry and to preach. I didn't know what that was, and uh, ended up in a lot of itinerary stuff, filling pulpits and uh, prison ministry, all those kind of things. I was uh, serving as an associate pastor, I guess, in <coughs> music. And uh, the pastor had asked me to work with the teenagers a little bit, start a Sunday school class, and so I did that. And that was when the spark kind of hit, and I realized that uh, there was a gift in me to connect with teenagers. Mm -hmm. And along with that gift came a love for that generation of teenagers. And so uh, that's just grown and uh, grown within me, and uh, God's just given me a passion for it. For that generation. Awesome, so that's awesome. kind of how it worked for me. Yeah, it worked. Well, for me, uh, I took a different route. Spent about eight years in the military. And being in the military, I, you know, I was around kids all the time. I joined a little church there just to be a part of their singing ministry. And uh, the kids gravitated toward me. But nevertheless, I ran <coughs> from the calling and <laughs> moved to uh, Beaumont. I got here, uh, joined Cathedral of Faith. And uh, while there, my uh, pastor's wife asked me to work with the children. I said, man, I don't know the first thing of teaching no kids, no Bible study, so don't do me like that. I figured God mm -hmm. had yeah. humor, right? Yeah, real funny, right. you know. <laughs> but, you know, some years later and after being called into ministry in 2000, uh, going through several different areas of the ministry, uh, my pastor came to me about five years ago and uh, asked me uh, would I be interested in taking over the youth ministry, me and my wife and uh it's been a blessing because when you when you think about it, the kids were already gravitating toward us, and they saw how we reacted with them throughout the church, and they said, "What better couple than to you know run our youth ministry?" And so here we are. Awesome, awesome. How about you, Jason? Man, I, I had a, a radical uh, salvation in '97, mm -hmm. so I mean we're coming up on about 20 years now, and so. Um, I, I wanted nothing to do with church. I mean, I grew up in church, but wanted to, nothing to do with it because I just saw hypocrisy. And, yeah, you know, and sounds just, familiar. You know, and I would, I would like think to, in, in my head, I would never do what that guy's doing. You right. know, behind the pulpit. And now right. I'm behind the pulpit. Yeah. Um, but I had a just a radical um, salvation. The Lord just completely wrecked my world, man, and just mm -hmm. changed my life. And I've always had a heart to want to see uh, young people experience the same thing I experienced, man. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. How about you, Mr. Chris? Pastor Chris. Well, uh, I don't know, man. Um, I was in church one day, and the pastor said, uh, who's crazy enough to do this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's what it is. I, I, I just believe that, um, uh, you know, when you work with young people, you definitely have to have a mind for it. Um, and then that was that's about the gist of it. You know, yeah. who, who's crazy enough to want to get in here and get, get dirty and right. get involved and get engaged and and uh, once everybody else didn't raise their hand, I think I was the only fool in the back of the church right. just doing like that. <laughs> but, um, you know, years in the making now, um, it's been a blessing. Awesome, yeah, something awesome. that you never, 
want to back out of. So, okay. yeah. My man, Jeremy. Pastor well, Jeremy. <laughs> I started out with Sunday school. I know that word is extinct now. Yeah. A lot of people don't go to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. But I started, started out as a Sunday school teacher with four kids. That four kids went to 14 and 14 to 40. And uh, a deacon pulled me to the side and said, maybe this is your calling. All right. And so I got involved in that in Kirbyville, Texas. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Got extra stoplights in Kirbyville. No, it's still two stoplights. <laughs> and stop one new stop sign. And one new is new. <laughs> and brand new. Here's another question. How important is it for the youth pastors to be on one accord with the head pastor? I'm using my experience. Mm -hmm. My pastor, again, is Pastor Carlton Sharp. Shout out to you, Pastor Sharp. Uh, he allows me to do what I need to do as far as, you know, our youth ministry. All right? Uh, and it's a con it has to be a constant steady in improvement or uh, growth. Yeah, well, anyway, how important is it for us as youth pastors to be on one accord with our pastors. I'm gonna start with you, Jason. Sir, uh, man, I, I think unity, man, it's just, if you don't have it, mm -hmm. then why are you with the pastor, you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. It's just, it, it's, it's crucial, it's very important. Like, for, for me, man, I, I love, Pastor Felshaw is my pastor, Pastor mm -hmm. Randy Felshaw, and um, uh, when, I, when I first met him, I mean, our, our hearts were just kindred, it was just, um, um, I could roll with the vision of the church. Mm -hmm. And then, like what you're saying, he, he gives me the liberty to do what I'm called to do. Right. When he needs to pull me aside, he will. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And I, I've, always been, I've always been, tried to be anyways, uh, one to be teachable, you right. know what I mean? And just, because I haven't arrived, I don't know everything, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So, but um, as far as the unity, man, it's, it's crucial. If you don't have it, it's, it, it makes everything else rocky, you know what I mean? Absolutely. The ministry hard. Right. So. How about you, Jim? Um, I, my brother and I, Paradise, we have the privilege of having that freedom that mm -hmm. Jason's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe that in that freedom, mm -hmm. you still have to have some type of connection, Absolutely. understand what the vision is, right. what are we trying to accomplish, because when they leave the children's church, they're coming into the main sanctuary, Absolutely. and we want to produce a system of believers. Right, and right. so I want to be a part of that system, so you got to be connected to the pastor. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. You want to add that? I think you said it well. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think what we all endeavor to do uh, is, is build a community of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're really engaged in a system where um, not only are you filling up your seats and, you know, building your church, you're putting people out in the community. And, your, and your word is very important, and that pastor's word is very important. And I think um, you, you definitely benefit from that unity and mm -hmm. understanding the vision more, more important mm -hmm. um, so that what you minister, um, that same, uh, that word through and through, mm -hmm. you know, the, and the character of that word right. runs through and through in the ministry. And it, it has to be that, absolutely. So I thank God for that because I'm able to go <coughs> to my pastor's office and, yeah. and I can sit down and actually talk to him and say, this is going on, that's going on. What do you need me to do about such and such? All right. Jay, what do you think about that? I think it's important to the point where uh, when you go out, people have to see because you, you're not just going out in yourself. You're going out in your church's name. Mm -hmm. And most people associate that church by the pastor. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a unity with that pastor, then they're going to be like, well, where your teaching coming right. from? <laughs> right, right, you know, right. uh, but it also, uh, within the church itself, when you 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 see you following the leadership, mm -hmm. then they don't have to run to the leadership all the time because they automatically know that if you're telling them one thing, then no more likely the leadership is going to tell them the same Absolutely. thing that you've told them. Okay. And so that that continuity, that unity, that that leadership, that fellowship has got to be on one accord. If it's not, you have a church that's divided. Right, right, right. You know, and that's <clears throat> something you just don't want to have uh, mm -hmm. because. Believe it or not, our children right now are the focal point of the church. Right, right. And reaching and teaching them is what brings a lot of your parents in. Mm -hmm. Because, and then that parent, if that parent kid is learning, and then that parent hears the same thing from the pastor mm -hmm. as that kid is hearing from the youth pastor, mm -hmm. again, that unity is already there. So right. they can go home and talk about the same thing that they just both learned, right. maybe on two different levels, but it's the same thing. Absolutely. All right, my man, Todd. 
Um, <clears throat> I would say, uh, in my opinion, it's vital, mm -hmm. absolutely vital, mm -hmm. that uh, the youth pastor, staff, whatever, and the senior pastor are aligned in where we're headed and right. how we're going to get there. Right. Uh, I too enjoy freedom, mm -hmm. a lot of freedom. Right, right. But uh, I've learned that if I just communicate to him, mm -hmm. let him know this is coming, this is what we're doing, this is what we're planning, mm -hmm. and things go well. Right. I've also discovered that if he's on board, mm -hmm. either from the stage or in conversations, private conversations, mm -hmm. um, that's a big boost to what we do in, in the youth mm -hmm. ministry. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, if he's not on board, Things aren't going to happen for right. you and, and uh, for the ministry. Uh, I think, and I might have already said this, he can make or break mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, the absolutely. ministry mm -hmm. and what you're trying to do. Right. Uh, and if he's with you, things are, are good. Mm -hmm. um, even when the enemy uh, tries to sow dissension, right. uh, as long as we're tight and we're communicating and yeah. working together, Absolutely. Good. Awesome. Here's another question. Uh, well, I'll make a statement first. On team building or having uh, the importance of a youth pastor having a solid team around him. You know what I mean? I mean a solid team. I mean, you know, if you have a, a obviously a basketball team, I'm going to use James Harden for instance. I don't want to use James Harden. I'm a little mad at him right yeah, now. Right but anyway, now. Yeah. But anyway uh, how hard it is for one person to carry a whole team all right it, it takes a team mm -hmm. you know what i mean well how important is it to have a strong team around you so you won't be the only one having to do everything it makes sense what i'm saying you are already on it i'm going right here. i'm going right here i'm going right here man i'm turning jason okay. <laughs> well I, I believe that uh my dad told me a long time ago mm -hmm. A man without nobody following him is just a man going for a walk. Got you, got you. And before you can minister the kids, I think the first ministry doesn't start on youth night. Come it on. starts in the meetings. Uh -huh. It starts in the planning. Got you. And they have to know that, hey, man, it's going to be so loud mm -hmm. for these kids. And right. then, like Jesus had the disciples, they began to join. That was his staff. Right. Um, a pastor, not being in line with a pastor's vision can make him break you. Mm hmm not having a solid team yeah, yeah. can make and break you as well. Right. Also, I'm going to say this, and I won't take too much time. No, we're good, we're good. Um, I believe that in the expression of that to team building, mm -hmm. they have to understand that you're not just a youth pastor because you're waiting for the pastor to die. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. I got you. Youth past being a youth pastor is not the position because you're trying to get an opportunity to preach. Right. You're on right. the stage. Right, right. And I know Pastor, he's about 70 years old. Oh, man. And I'm 30. Yeah, yeah. And so he ain't got too much. Every time he's sick, you, you sit up in your seat. This yeah, might be it. That's a problem. No, no. And see, pa see Pastor Shaw going to be at least 120 years. So. <laughs> exactly. Ain't, ain't no sense in nobody waiting for that. Anyway, go ahead. So even in team building, they have to understand that is not your purpose. Right. That's not what you're trying to do. Right. We're trying to develop young people like uh, Chris said my brother said so well mm -hmm. to go out in the community right to, to represent God so gotcha that's gotcha awesome. and since you was about to dish that assist off to Jason it up. that was pretty good <laughs> I'm going straight to Jason go ahead man man having a strong leadership team dude so important um, because you just you you end up getting burned out mm -hmm. you end up yeah, you know, taking control I've been under leadership where it's very controlling right and it's just like a one-man show mm -hmm. and you can see burnout Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I've learned, of course, delegating right. authority, you know, yes, raising sir. up leaders, of course, that could support your vision mm -hmm. um, and pouring into them and whatnot and letting them have the same liberty that my pastor gives me, mm -hmm. right. you know, and, and then too, I mean, they run with it and they do it better than I could do it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, yeah, yeah. you know, and so I try to rally people around me that have strengths that I don't have, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying, yeah. and so, um, so I don't get burned out. Right. So my marriage don't suffer. My family don't Come suffer. On, man. You know what I mean? And so it's just, you know, I'm very big on making sure that my family stays intact. Absolutely. Because, you know, yeah. I, you can't minister right, man, when you're, right. if you're at odds with your spouse. Come on, right? Come on man. Come on, That's right. That's right. And so, but having that strong leadership to help support the vision mm -hmm. yeah, is so vital. Awesome. So awesome. Vital. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I was taught uh, long ago that uh, leaders 
develop leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm guilty of trying to gather followers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. And um, I told our adult leaders this past Wednesday we had a, a appreciation dinner for them. Mm -hmm. That, in my opinion, they are the backbone of mm -hmm. the ministry. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you take them away, ministry does not happen. Right, it right. It just doesn't. And I agree with Jason. Mm -hmm. You can't do this by yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't even try. Right. Don't even try. And, uh, uh, man, I, I look at faces. I can't remember the last time I tried to recruit someone. I haven't mm. had to. Hadn't had to. Because wow. the leaders right. that are with me know what's going on. Right. And, and they're they're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, they've asked me to have conversations with people, follow up, do those kind of things. But I, I can't remember the last time I recruited anyone. That, that's a part of the ministry. Right. But they do that. And mm -hmm. uh, they're developing. Uh, it's just happening. Right. And uh, I would agree with uh, Jason as well. Uh, in my ordination service, Dr. C looked me right in the eye and said, don't let the church become your mistress. Uh, mm -hmm. Gotcha. And so gotcha. he's saying exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That uh, don't try to do this alone. Mm -hmm. Don't leave your wife uh, sitting at home when you could be at home and other yeah. people doing ministry. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Adult leaders, <coughs> volunteers, however you want to right. call them. Extremely important. Big Extremely time. important. Got to have them. Absolutely. Yeah, I know a whole lot of your uh, crew. Uh, uh, that's a buck wild crew you got there, my man. It is, uh, but they, they, they solid, though. Exactly. They solid. Exactly. Uh, Love the Lord. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what you have to see. The kids are looking for consistency. Uh -huh. yeah. And when you have a consistent team, the kids buy into what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to have that leadership around you. I mean, you can have other people within the church that deal with your kids off and on, off and on. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times them kids is not going to go talk to them about some personal problems like they'll go talk to the youth leadership. Mm -hmm. And there are times when I don't have to be there and a kid may pull one of the other leaders aside and talk to them. I was listening to Jason and talking about the church being your mistress. Beautiful thing in my mind is, is my wife is walking right beside me. Right. You know, and, and so <laughs> when, when Pastor talked to us, he talked to the both of us. Right. And so now I, I handle the male aspect, mm -hmm. and I give her the female aspect because I, I really don't want no females come to me. Right, right. So, you know, so <laughs> yeah, I'm trying yeah. to keep hey, my wife over there. Go talk right, to her. Right. You right. know, Smart but man. It, it's, <laughs> it's good yeah. uh, to have that solid core of people that are willing to do whatever they need to do for the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you have that, that solid core, people are willing to go above and beyond. And my leadership team will tell you, if you ain't taking care of your house, don't come up here and try to take care of God's house. Oh, man. Yeah. Because ministry first starts at home. Starts at home. And if your house is shaky, mm -hmm. you're going to bring that shakiness to the church house. Yeah. And then the kids are going to be looking at you like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. You yeah, know? Yeah. And so it's important uh, to have them around. And like you're saying, uh, I can't do everything. I right. tried that in other areas of ministry mm -hmm. and found myself dog tired. Yeah, man. You know, uh, and now, like we was talking earlier, I give <laughs> that delegation, this mm -hmm. is yours. Mm -hmm. I tell them, if they don't invite you into that area, don't go crossing into nobody's street. Uh, okay? <laughs> yeah. Unless they invite you in, mm -hmm. don't go trying to handle their business. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they're handling what they're handling, right. and you're handling what you're you handling. Mm -hmm. And that helps because now you're responsible for this. All I want to see is the finished product. When right. I see that product, now we're ready to move forward. Absolutely. Once we move forward, it's on. It's all. It's mm -hmm. just all gravy from there. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to have that that continuity, that unity, or that unit. I say, uh, in order to carry out ministry, gotcha. I can't reach everybody. Right, right, right. But you, with the people you have, they go to different areas. So, absolutely. That's good. Got anything on oh, that? Oh, man, these, these, these guys, yeah. You got that? Yeah. I'm because I do have a question <laughs> for you. I'm going to go straight to you with this. How have, as a lot of years of experience of, of, of youth ministry right here, how have the youth changed from when you first started? Or how much? Or how fast have they change I, I think i think what you end up happening um it, it's it's no question that that kids uh in this generation 
are different mm -hmm. from even when I was coming up and the generation before that generation, the generation before that generation. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's uh, uh, something that is on the negative aspect, but they evolve with what's, um, they evolve with what's happening because they're called to address what's happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I absolutely They're, they're get born that. at a particular point in time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think with that, because I, I feel that the, the question that uh, I just add to it is that when we minister, sometimes we can minister in a rigid methodology. Okay. You know, we, we want to talk to kids the way that we were talked to. We want to minister the way that the generation before us ministered. Um, but the biggest thing that helps me stay fresh, and mm -hmm. I, I know with uh, Pastor Jeremy being the youth pastor, uh, and, and helps us be relevant is understanding the calling of the generation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So they're changing, yeah. I mean, yeah. these kids are not the same. Right. Um, and you're dealing with a, a, a dispensation of children that, that um, they're closer to the end time. Right. You know, wow. their gifts and their talents are, are necessary for what, what's on the horizon. And so they change. But as we minister, we have to minister knowing that change. That is not all bad. Right. You know, you got to minister to that calling. And so, absolutely. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay because actually we have to keep evolving ourselves. You absolutely. know what I mean? Right. We're having to ever change. You know what I mean? All the time. So, anyway, all the time. how about you, Jason, on that? Man, gosh, I remember when, I mean, my phone was a flip phone, you know, you got the Zach Morris phone, you know, and just everything, yeah, the big old block, I still, I wish I still had it. <laughs> but, um, I mean, everything is just so digital, it's just uh, hands-on, you know, everything mm -hmm. is like at the touch of the fingertip, you know. Mm -hmm. and so, um, these kids are just um, so exposed to so much more mm -hmm. than... 16, you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, right. you know, and it's so easy access now. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like you're competing with the things of the world that, um, that with, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't have, I mean, like you have to get on the internet. Now mm -hmm. it's just like right here on my hand, you can get on stuff. That's right, just, right. You know, and so, um, you know, dealing with kids with like looking at pornography and, and it's just, it's not something like a magazine under, I mean, it's like, it's just right in your hand right, right. all day long. Right. One click away. You know? One click yeah. away. And so, um, um, I mean, the challenges are, are, are real, of course, um, and I think they're, they've gotten stronger. But I, I do believe, though, that God's, of course, raising up leaders and raising up students, that, like a remnant, man, where um, they're, even though it's getting darker, I believe the Lord's getting brighter in yeah, this generation, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so... The battle's real, man. Oh, yeah. It's legit. We're just about out of time. We want you guys to come right back with us tomorrow. Same time. We're going to have a good time, and we're going to encourage each other once again. But we want all you guys to come back with us on tomorrow, all right? Have a good one.